Hi, I'm David Katz from thepostgame.com, and we're joined today by CAA's head of football, Tom Condon. Tom, thanks for joining us today. Well, you know what? We, we don't call it head of football. We're, uh, we're a horizontal company, so we're all agents in the football division. And uh, Jimmy Sexton and I just happen to be the senior guys. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. So as you walk through this now and you see what Radio Row is and the whole media center and compare that to some of the first Super Bowls you attended, how is this different? Well, I mean, it's, it's a world of difference. The, uh, I mean, in 1974, my rookie year, and, and we're talking about, you know, quite some time ago, um, there, there really wasn't much to it. And, uh, and, and now this is uh, obviously a, a massive production. As a matter of fact, um, eight years ago, I, I saw the way the NFL was exploding, um, the difference in the way that the fans perceived our players that, as celebrities uh, mm -hmm. instead of just athletes. And, uh, and, and that was why I wanted to go to CAA and, and, and have access to that kind of a platform. That's interesting. So you played more than a decade in the league and you then decide you want to be an agent. At what point during your playing game did you realize this is actually something that I could do and do very successfully? I, I didn't really. I just uh, I had gone to law school during the off seasons because in those days there wasn't any off season program, so you just went either went most guys went and got jobs. Right. And so in lieu of a job, I went to school, <laughs> and uh, and then I had that time with the players association for during the '82 uh, strike. Uh, I was on the negotiating team, and then subsequently they elected me president. So by the time I was done, I literally had a, some of my veteran teammates say, "Hey, why don't you do our contracts?" And, uh, and I thought, wow, I might have found a job. <laughs> so think about back then, the role of an agent, and compare that to what you do today in your role as an agent. How have things stayed the same and how have things changed? Well, stayed the same from the standpoint that um, the, the players are terrific. Uh, it, 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 all of them feel like my teammates. I mean, it, you admire their courage and their toughness and their work ethic and their loyalty to each other and, and, and all of that, and that has stayed the same. Everything else has changed. <laughs> Every part of the business has changed. Uh, of course, when I started doing it, there, there wasn't any free agency. Mm -hmm. So when a player was finished with his contract, his options were to um, re-sign with the team or get a job someplace else. Yeah, so you know, that's tough sledding, right? Not much leverage in those situations. You have to be a really good player and willing to withhold your services and just not play. Um, now, of course, with free agency, we have options and... Uh, and, and things have changed so dramatically. Um, and uh, hail to my buddy Gene Upshaw um, for, for leading that charge in 93 when we went through the trial you know, that got us free agency. And I'm proud to say I had a plaintiff and, and got to testify in that free agency trial. Uh, certainly the way players have performed and, and the money and all that has changed and evolved over the time. And as you talk about the way that the rules have changed in terms of free agency and things like that, how do you, as a professional, get reps and build muscles that you may not have had when you started out and do these other things that you need to do to deliver for your players because your job has changed and it's become much more complex perhaps than it even was at the beginning. Well, certainly more complex because the collective bargaining agreement and, and the, the document changes often and, um, and so, you know, that part of it uh, everybody has to keep up with. But uh, also the, uh, the, the, the services that we provide now for the players is so specialized um, that we need a lot more people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that increases your overhead but, and, you, and you have to make sure you get the right team together. And so you're providing a lot of different services for the players and we have to trust the team because they're going to be in contact with the player as well. Um, but when it comes to the, to the playing contract and to the NFL part of the deal, um, the, the buck stops here. Outside of the contract, what other types of services do you guys provide for these young men? Well, uh, certainly the uh, uh, marketing and licensing and uh, public relations and, uh, and, and all of those things. Um, the, uh, at the very least with CAA, it's a, uh, um, uh, probably a, a lifestyle uh, kind of an enhancement in that they have access to movie premieres and concerts and meet and greet with the other stars and celebrities and those kinds of things. But the other part of it is that we're hoping for um, uh, access to other streams of revenue as well as potential uh, employment opportunities when, they're, when their football career is over. You're in the enviable position of being able to choose who you work with at this point. What types of qualities do you look for in these young men when they're coming through the draft that says, I want them to be a part of my roster? 
you know, I, I wish that I had a choice of everybody that I wanted. I, I've got some more I'd pick, but uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, we have had uh, had the good fortune to, to work with a lot of really top players. And so what we look for now is uh, character, intelligence, and a passion for the game. And, uh, and, and the players that, that, that fit those three categories will play at a high level and they'll play for a really long time. And, uh, and, and we've been extraordinarily fortunate to, to have been able to be associated with those kind of people. Um, so th there's been a lot of change, not just in terms of the contracts and in terms of the game itself, but there's been a lot of change to the marketing and the connectivity around it that technology provides. How has social media made your life more challenging? It's made my life more challenging because I've had to hire an entire group of people to deal with just that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I just stay away. <laughs> You know, the uh, uh, one thing that you and I talked about a little bit before was, you know, the rules changes that have occurred um, since the mid-80s. Um, you would have to look at the NFL and think that couldn't be happenstance. It had to be a determination that they wanted the game to be faster, um, uh, more high scoring, lead changes, uh, close games, all of those kinds of things, and spectacular plays. And so the, the old three yards in a cloud of dust and pound the defense and everything, um, and so the, the, the players like Butkus and Nitschke and Willie Lanier and those kinds of guys that played you know, middle linebacker and were crushing everybody, they don't exist any longer. I mean, they're, uh, they're on the sidelines because you've got your nickel and dime packages. And so it, it, since the advent of, of, of being able to extend your arms for the offensive linemen, they made everybody that looks like me obsolete. Um, and, uh, but they gave more protection to the quarterback. And then the protection on the quarterback in terms of crown of the helmet, extra step, uh, uh, flopping on top of him, uh, all of those things. Uh, then the not being able to hit the defenseless receiver, um, and, and especially the enforcement of, uh, of the five-yard chuck rule and the contact down the field, which was dramatically changed after the conference championship game between uh, the Indianapolis Colts and New England Patriots, where there was, you know, if, I, if my memory is correct, no contact fouls calls for the entire game. And since then, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's swung the other way. And now we've seen the percentage of passing and running plays change dramatically. The yardage for the passers dramatically changed. And the, the, the scoring in the game is so exciting. It's, uh, they understood what they wanted and they got it and it's, and it's fantastic. Do you think it's a better product? I mean, as a football purist, do you think it is a better game today? Well, it, it, it just kind of depends on what you want. I mean, in, in the uh, you know, early 70s, uh, mid-70s, you know, we were maiming each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so you know, you'd like to think that a guy could get a few years in the league and make some money and, and not finish as a cripple. Right. Um, but at the same time, so I think that part of it, but yes, nevertheless, they've done a fantastic job. The, the game is exciting. I mean, sometimes you get to the fourth quarter and the lead changes three times and, and you're just on the edge of your seat. And, 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 and let's face it, the, I think the attention span of the American public is probably a little less than it was 20 or 30 years ago. And, uh, and so we're, they're right in sync. It seems like the money also seems to follow these rules. Quarterbacks become even more valuable. Cornerbacks become more valuable. Wide receivers become more valuable. Perhaps running backs a little less valuable, at least from an economic standpoint, with the role that they perform. What do you think about the distribution of money among the positions? Do you think it's where it should be? Well, as, as soon as there was going to be a finite number of cap dollars for the teams to spend, you knew that there was that that, that the that the money was going to go to the positions, not just the players, but to the positions that changed the outcome of the game. The outcome of the games changed on third down, so it's going to be the third down players. So you're you're right. It's the quarterback. It's the deep threat wide receiver. It's the left offensive tackle. It's the it's the pass rush and defensive end or the pass rush and 34 out uh, will linebacker, and it's the corner. And, and those and those five are the are the highest in the franchise tags, and they've been the the five highest for you know, yeah. you know year year after year. What's a fun fact about you that people don't know but should? <laughs> I, I, I'm not a fun guy. <laughs> there's 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 not much to it. Uh, I, I would think that the only fun thing is that at my age I've I've got a manual that my college roommate sent me called convict conditioning, and I'm trying to do a I'm trying to do a uh, one-handed handstand push-up. So. <laughs> Tom Condon, thank you so much for your time today. Very informative. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoyed it.